Hello everyone and welcome back to a spin-off series where we will learn how to automate our AWS services using Python. And this channel's name is Pythonic and we haven't used Python for a very long time and that's not fair isn't it? So I felt as we are going to create a few real-time projects on AWS, why not start working towards that goal and getting our hands on with automation to begin with. And there'll be a lot of videos coming on this channel as a part of this series. So please make sure that you have subscribed and you have hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss out on any videos on this series and from the channel as well. So in today's session, we will get to learn how to create an EC2 instance with Python. I hope you're excited about this and if you're ready, let's begin. And before starting this video and this series, there are a couple of uh, prerequisites that we have to do. So you need to have a Python 3 installed on your machine. And if you are using Mac or Windows, it doesn't matter. It will work the same way. And you need to have an IDE of your choice so that you can write code effectively. Here I'm using PyCharm, but uh, you can use uh, Visual Studio Code or Atom or any IDE of your choice. And you need to have Boto3 and AWS CLI packages installed as a part of your Python package list. So we will also install that and I'll show you how to install it. And apart from that, there will be small changes that we need to make in the AWS environment that uh, will help us create or automate uh, using Python. So that also we will do. And there are a few more things that we need to have before uh, we can create or automate things with AWS. So without taking any more time, let's start. So this is your PyCharm IDE and uh, if you just uh, go to this about, you can see I'm using the 2020 version of PyCharm. And if you haven't installed Python and if you haven't installed PyCharm yet, or if you want to use them, then please check the video link in the description below. I have given the tutorial for installing Python and PyCharm. It will really help you and I have also given a link for how to clone your Git repositories and, and how to use GitHub desktop as well. So please check that out because we are going to use those tools and we are going to clone repositories and we are going to also and we are going to also commit our code that we are going to write. Whatever code that we write, we will commit it on our GitHub portal so that you can also use them. So that will be a very helpful thing for you as well. So when you are using PyCharm, the first thing that you need to do is if you're working on a new project, you should immediately create a new project for yourself by clicking on new project. So there's the new project link, go to file. Then the first option that you get is new project. Just click on that. I'll just give it as AWS PY demo. I'll just keep it very simple. So AWS and PY Python and demo. And I'm going to create a new virtual environment for this one. So if you see the user name that we have here is uh, Tuffer Apollo. So the location for the virtual environment that it is pointing towards me is a uh, uh, username slash PyCharm projects, AWS PY demo. That's the project name. And within which it will create a virtual environment. I can change this name from V hyphen ENV to anything that I want, but I'll just keep it that way. And if you want to use an existing interpreter, you can just select this and you can uh, direct it to the path of the python.exe inside the scripts folder of your uh, virtual environment. So that could also work. But now I'll just create a new virtual environment and we'll install the packages here itself. So once you're given the name in the project creation form, just click on create and open a new window. That's the idle way to do that. So now your project is ready. So if you see, this project is already ready for us, AWS PY demo and inside which you will find your V hyphen ENV that is your virtual environment. Okay, so if you're using PyCharm, you can actually install Python packages from PyCharm itself. You don't have to uh, explicitly install in your terminal. And if you go here in files, you will go to settings. You can go to settings and inside that you will find appearance and behavior, editor, version control, and the next thing that you would find is project. So just expand this and you will find project interpreter and project structure. The one thing that we are interested in is project interpreter. So just click on this. And these are the current installed packages that you have in your virtual environment. So if you see here, it is showing the path for the virtual environment. <clears throat> and within this interpreter, these are all the packages that have been already installed. 
So let's suppose I want to install another package. What I can do, I can just click on the plus icon. And what is that I want to install? I wanted to install Boto 3, isn't it? So just search for Boto 3, you will find the Boto 3 here. So AWS SDK for Python, that's the Boto 3 package that we want to install. And just click on install package here. So it will automatically choose one of the latest versions or you can specify a version here and it will install it for you. So now Boto3 is installed successfully. And the next thing that we wanted to install was AWS CLI. So just search for AWS CLI. So this is your universal command line environment for AWS. This is also something that we need uh, to configure the AWS. So don't forget to install this. This is really important. So AWS CLI. Just install, click on install package and it will install it. So the current version is 1.19.3. So it will install this version. Okay, so now AWS CLI is already installed. So if you want to verify or if you want to validate whether these packages are installed or not, just close this window and you can come back here. So if you see, we have AWS CLI installed and we have Boto3 installed as well. So what if you don't want any package, then how do you uninstall it? So you can just click on any of the packages and you can just click on this minus button. So this minus button will actually uninstall that package. But don't do this right now. I just wanted to show you like how you can install and uninstall packages. So that's it. You can just click on OK. There are three things here that you see here. There are three options here. One is to do and the second one is terminal and third one is the Python console. So just click on terminal here and once you click on terminal you will be seeing that it has already activated the virtual environment for me so when you see the virtual environment name within the simple braces and you see the path here it means that it is inside the activated virtual environment so what we can do here we can just execute a aws cli command to see whether aws cli commands actually work or not so for that what you need to do you just need to type aws space configure Or what you can do, I'll just uh, type, yeah. See, so when you type AWS configure, if it is asking for AWS access key ID, it means that it is successfully installed. I'm sorry, I could not find a word that was matching after a very, so I had to tell it is successfully installed. Please don't mind. So once you get this option, like uh, it is asking for you to uh, enter your AWS access key ID, so this is a part that is very important for us. And this is the information that we need. And we have to get this information from our AWS console. So how do we do that? Let's go check that out. So this is our AWS management console. And uh, if we need our AWS uh, access key IDs, we need to go to IAM. And we need to create a user. So let's suppose I go here in identity and access management that's IAM and I already have a user that you already have seen thousands of times that is Pytholic but I want to create a developer account so how do I do that I'll just click on add user I'll give it a name so it will be developer so this is my developer account and the thing that will give me programmatic access is this one so let's suppose I'm using this user or the username as a developer. I just want him to give programmatic access. So this user will be able to automate things, but it will not be able to log into the console to view anything. So it will only have programmatic access. So I hope you're getting the point here. So when we create a user and we set up a AWS access type, we can actually give him either a programmatic access or a AWS management console access. So here you can enable a password which actually grants you permission to access your AWS management console like the way you are doing it right now. But this programmatic access will give you an AWS access key ID and a secret access key so that you can create uh, automation using these uh, security tokens that you generate. And based on that, you will be able to connect to this AWS environment. So once you have selected programmatic access and you've given the username, just click on permissions. Let's suppose you don't want to create a group, then you can just attach policies directly to this one. So I would create a EC2 instance. So 
the first thing that I would do is I'll attach a full EC2 permission to this one. So if you see, we have Amazon EC2 full access. Just select this and click next on tags. Full dev EC2 access. Then just click on review and then just create the user. So once you have successfully created this user, it will give you the username that is the developer and the access key ID. I cannot share these details with you. So you will as well get the information. So there is a download option where you can download the CSV file. I'll just download it again. So I'll just save it. So I've saved it successfully and I don't want to lose it because that's really important for me. And if you click on show, that will show you the secret access key as well, where you can copy and paste from here as well. But I won't do that. I just need the information for myself to configure my AWS command line. So once you've done this, just close this and you will have your own developer account. Just paste the AWS access key ID and the secret access key. And the default region that we have here is AP South one, obviously. So we will choose that itself. And if you don't want to enter it and it has already selected, then you can just hit enter or else you can just type the uh, region that you want. And the format of output that I need is JSON. So I'll just keep it as JSON. And that's it. Your AWS is configured right now. So the first thing after we have configured the AWS CLI is we'll create a package, the Python package that we want and uh, inside which we will write the code. So just give it a name like uh, source files. This is a package and inside that we have uh, to create a Python file, which will be like uh, AWS EC2 create instance. That's it. So once you've created your file, then the next step for us is to write the code, isn't it? But before that, I want to tell you two things here. So as you can see, we have the terminal and we have already configured the AWS uh, settings or the AWS configure command and we have already configured our AWS settings. So here we have two options. So one is terminal. So when you click on terminal, it will actually activate your virtual environment. And if you do a pip freeze, you will be able to see all the packages that are listed or that are installed as a part of your virtual environment. So we have Boto3 and AWS CLI. So if you just want to view your configurations again, you can just do uh, AWS configure list. So you'll be able to see uh, the current configuration that you are currently having and the file path for this will be inside uh, dot aws slash config you can find this inside your users folder inside the username you will be able to find this uh, config file itself where you can actually edit it but we are not going to do this if you want to actually set the values then you can just type aws configure and you can as well set the values that you need as per your requirement and you can set a profile name as well for this one so as we haven't specified any profiles so it is not set the value is not set for this profile but our main objective here is to create the EC2 instance, isn't it? So as we have already configured our AWS uh, connections or the AWS uh, environment, the next thing for us is to start off with writing the code. And this code is already available. By the time I will be uploading this video, I'll be giving you the link for the code and you can try it yourself. But make sure that you understand that any resource that you create will be chargeable. And based on that, you must not create resources haphazardly and you have to ensure that you are not misusing this uh, because if you just randomly create like 100 instances because this will be able to do that you cannot have a restriction on this so accidentally if you just are trying to experiment follow what i am doing and just try to understand this so that you don't have any problems while working on aws using python so the first thing that we need to do is we need to type a command or a, sorry we need to type a comment so let's create EC2 instances. This is using Python. Python Boto. Sorry. 
go to 3. Okay, so the first thing that we need is we need to import Boto3 and uh, here I want to create a function. So my function name will be create EC2 instance and I'll just keep it with no parameters. I don't need it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a resource variable resource ec2 is equal to and bo 3 actually is a package which provides you with a method called client where you can provide your resource name so if you just type boto 3 dot client you can provide what is the resource that you are currently creating right now so that is ec2 for us so we will be creating an ec2 resource and the next thing is we have to use this client that we have created and we have to uh, run a particular instance if you want to run a particular instance or if you want to create an instance then you have to provide parameters to that and this is the function run underscore or uh, run underscore instances which will be helpful for us to create the instances on aws and here as you've already configured your aws uh, command line or cli you don't have to provide the aws access keys and the secret keys in the parameters so you have already configured it in your environment so you don't have to do this so having said that we'll pass the parameters so the first parameter is for us is basically image id so image id is basically your ami id we can get the ami id and i'll just show you how to get this so let's suppose you are in the aws management console you can just go to ec2 and ec2 is the place where we actually work with instances isn't it so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to fetch the ami so just click on launch instance and you here you can actually find the ami id for yourself so this is amazon linux 2 ami and this is the ami id just copy this so this will be for the 64 bit x86 and uh, this will be for the 64 bit arm this is for the graviton processor so we don't want that as of now so we will use this ami id just copy it and just paste it here that's it and the next parameter that we want is we want to have a minimum count of our instance so that will be one we want to just have a minimum amount of uh, instance creation to be one so that will be the number of instances so minimum number of instances will be one and we'll have a max count that will also be one sorry i'm typing along with my speaker <laughs> very close to my keyboard so i might fumble a bit so please don't get irritated for this uh, please excuse me for a moment because i'll be moving back to bangalore and uh, then i'll have my setup there so i'll be much more fluent in typing so please bear with me for this time and the next parameter that we have is instance type so instance type is basically the type of instance that we are going to use so that can be at tico dot so that can be like t2.micro or t2.large or t2.small but as this is free tier eligible so we are going to use this so t2.micro just write this and you should be good with it and the last parameter that we are going to use is key name so this is used for logging into the instance using ssh so this is the key pair that we already have so i think we already have a key pair uh, with us uh, and we can make use of it if you want to see the list of key pairs that you already have so if you want to know your keys you can just type key pair in your service search bar and you will get an option to select and see what are the keys that you already have and you can use one of them and if you want to create you can just uh, click on create key pair and you can use either pem or ppk and you can enter the name and you can create the key pair and use it and then that's it so the next thing that I want to do was I wanted to add a try catch block. That's it. Save it. So now the next thing that we want to do is we have to call this function because we have written this function. So just type this. And if suppose we want to have any print statements, I can also add it like creating EC2 instance. You might be thinking how we are going to supply the VPC ID and the subnet ID. We can give it here. You can supply it here and it will take it as an argument and it will host it at that particular VPC and subnet ID. But here I'm not going to use it. And uh, there are so many things that you can configure, like you can configure your security groups as, as well. But I'm not going to do that right now. We'll keep this very simple. Like for the first video, we will keep it very simple. 
so that moving on you will have a habit of using these uh, terminologies and these configurations so that you will be very much familiar with this so that when we go on to the heavy stuff you will be much more comfortable so we'll take the baby steps so that you have the perfect way of learning so now as we have uh, uh, written this line which actually calls our function then you can just go ahead and run this file just type python and the file name that you're given dot py there's the file name that we have created and you should be inside the folder path which has this file so i am inside the apollo pycharm projects aws py demo source file so there's the folder name and inside that i have this file so i can just hit enter and run it so now it is creating the ec2 instance and we can just go back and uh, this is my ec2 console i can just refresh it here see now it has started creating our instance see so this has already so this is already in the pending state and now it is in running state and we have successfully created our ec2 instance by just using python and boto3 module so this is the private ip that we have this is a public ip that we have and uh, this is the key that we had used and it is using the default vpc and one of the randomly used uh, uh, subnet values so don't worry about this it has already done the things that we want for us and the security group it'll just by default it'll go to 8162 tcp and we can make changes to our security group and we can use one of the default security groups as well but in order to do that we have to get some hands-on with this and then we can make changes to the ec2 instances uh, in the later videos that are going to come in the channel so don't worry about that so the first thing that we have done is we have basically created the instance and the next thing that i want to do is i want to just show you how we can actually describe the instance so just type def and i'll just uh, type a method name describe ec2 instance and the next thing that i want to do is i just want to copy this i'll just copy this whole thing and i'll just paste it here and we want to describe the instances in it so i'll just delete this and i'll just type describing and here we need the resource that is our client but the next thing that we want to do is we want to use it to describe the instances so the function that we are going to use is describe underscore instances that's it and just save it and uh, we'll just copy this method and we'll just paste it here and i'll just comment this one because we have already created the instances and it we just need to describe it now so now just go ahead and run the file again okay i haven't printed it i'll just print it just type print just use the print method and then just run it again see so when you print the describe instances so uh, as we have only one instance right now so it is printing the configurations for that particular instance and there's the ami id so there's the ami id that we have used here so there's the one and the instance id is 0c07b so i can just go back here see 0c07b this is the same instance that we are talking about so as this is only one and we have only one instance here so it is just basically trying to uh, gather all the information for us so if suppose i want to get this instance id okay so this function that you see here is basically taking a list of arguments you can provide a parameter here called instances ids or instance ids and you can pass a list of instance ids to this so that you can get only you can only describe the instances for that particular instance id so let's suppose i want to pass it an instance id value so this will be my instance id value and this will be the list and i can just pass this string here okay and you can just save it and you can just run it again sorry it should be ids see so now i'm sorry for that so it should be instance ids so as you can see it is just printing for one instance and that is the one that we need but what if we just want to get this value out of the json that we are getting so we can iterate from this json and we can just uh, index it and we can get the value as well so how to do that i'll just uh, use the same thing like i'll just uh, remove this print statement 
and i'll just remove this we don't want this we don't want the hard coded values right now so what i'm going to do is as you can see this is a dictionary and this is the first key that we have just iterate through this and keep an index value for uh, reservation and as this is a list we'll take the zeroth value and for now i'll just keep the instance id because it is just having one instance and if there are multiple instances then we can use a for loop but that's not going to happen right now i'll just use this and of zero and what is the key here it will be instance id so i'll just use it here that's it and now i can print this value and it will just print this value for me and it'll extract it and from the result itself see interesting isn't it so as we have created the instance we have uh, described the instance the next thing that i wanted to do was i wanted to reboot the instance so for that i can write the function reboot ec2 instance so to reboot the instance i want the instance id isn't it but i have already created a function which gives me this value so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to return this value here so i'll just paste it and i'll just return this whole value here and i'll just return a string so i'll just use string method and i'll just paste it here and save it so this is the instance or this is the method that is going to return the value of the instance id for me type reboot and just if you want to fetch the instance id just type instance underscore id is equal to call the function that's it this will be your instance id and if suppose we want to reboot this instance then we need to just type resource resource dot reboot underscore instances and what is the parameter that we wanted instance ids id is equal to that will be a list and the value is instance id so this will be the value of instance id that's what we are hoping for isn't it but once you have done this you can just run the code once again so that you get the instance rebooted mostly you will not be able to see because it will be that fast and uh, i'll just hope for if it actually works i'll just try and print it so that i get some value as a response and just run it i don't have a conclusive evidence here but i can just log into the machine and see i think basically like uh, whether it has rebooted or not but it's okay so this is basically how we reboot the instance but if suppose we want to stop the instance so that would be our next guess basically we can just stop the instance so that we can start it again so that will be one of the operations that we want just copy this once again and just paste it and just type stop and we'll just rename this to stop again and i'll just need the instance id once again and i'll just rename this reboot to stop that's it just copy the method name and just call it and now what do you have done to stop the instance there's the function name stop underscore instances it takes the instance id as a parameter which takes instance ids as a list of values and we have already got the values from the instance id variable so i can just type the same python space the file name and i can run it once again so this is the id and i'll just refresh this it is stopping right now so these are some of those uh, things that we can automate basically and this is a very very minuscule thing that we are doing right now so don't think that this is what everyone does but this is the starting point we should start somewhere at least isn't it for us to basically get to have the knowledge on how things actually work so now the instance has already been stopped so the next thing for us is to start the instance i'll just comment this and i will just copy this once again and i'll just paste it and i'll type what start and i'll just rename this to start and uh, we need the instance id 
we need the resource once again actually what i can do is i can just uh, remove this and i can pass it every time by just creating a class here and i can just uh, make it a object but i don't want to do that i'll just keep it simple for now we'll do this we'll do this i know you will be having your fingers actually your palms actually itching to do that but i can understand your curiosity and your your i don't have any word that can describe this but yeah i can understand your feelings we'll do that don't worry so to start the instance we have a function name that is start underscore instances which takes the same instance id as a parameter that's it you can just copy the function and you can just call it so start describing that's it just refresh this come back here refresh this now it is in pending state and in some time it should be in a running state have some patience yeah see now it is in running state and in some time it will have a status check of two out of two so now it is in a running state instance is running and if you go back you will be able to see the status current status is pending but it has already started so now that we have created the instance we have described the instance we have rebooted the instance we have stopped the instance we have started the instance and the last thing that we have for us is to obviously terminate the instance because we have used that for a demo now our job is done we can just terminate it so we'll rename this function terminate and i'll just copy this and i'll just paste it here terminate and i'll just call this here and the function for terminating the instance is yes you guessed it right terminate underscore instances and you can use the instance id you can have more than one instance id here and you can use it as a part of the list it'll do it in a for loop so don't worry about that so if you just do this it'll terminate the instance for us that's the big thing right now so just hit the push button again and now the code is 32 and the name or the current state is shutting down and in a few moments it will be shut down so we have written this code and this code will be available to you on the github link that i have provided and uh, if you wish to clone this you can watch the videos of how to clone a git repository and how to make use of the pycharm i have already told you and i have already given you the links how to install pycharm and how to install python you can both use them and i can guarantee you that you'll be able to run this code successfully and if you still have any doubts then please put them in the comment section below and this is just the start don't worry about this we i know we are going slow but we will catch up to this and we will learn everything maybe it may be slow and uh, i think many of you might get frustrated because that might be very simple for a few members out here who might be trying to grab things in a faster pace but we have to understand that not everyone learns at the same pace and we have to understand that we have to help each other and in the comment section if I, if anyone has any doubts then i want the members to also help them out because this is a team that we have and uh, this youtube team actually needs to help each other for the community to grow and that's how we can help each other and we can make sure that the coming generation or the people who want to learn things learn it in a better way and that's what i have for you today so thanks everyone for joining in for today's session of aws let's automate series so if you have any doubts then please put them in the comment section below and if you're new then please don't forget to subscribe because that really helps me a lot and if you wish to see the other videos on aws they are on the playlist and on the description below in the links so that you can get more ideas on how aws works and if you still have any doubts as i already told you please make sure that you comment and uh, let me know your views whether you like this or not and please make sure that you hit the bell notification icon so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video so i'll meet you in the next session of aws let's automate or aws <laughs> and stay safe stay healthy and until next time it's pytholic signing off